Please be seated. Come into this place, come in. Come into this place which we make holy by our presence. Come in with all of your vulnerabilities and strengths, fears and anxieties, loves and hopes. For here you need not hide, nor pretend, nor be anything other than who you are and are called to be. Come into this place where we can touch and be touched, heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven. Come into this place where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. Come into this place. Come. Amen. Brother Son, be seated, please. <coughs> Brother Son. Yes, ma'am. Please be seated. I, I, Thank you. I don't know. I don't know, time is a waste. Some things never. This is the only change. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are, together again. I've been looking forward to being here ever since Gail asked me to fill in for her. Some of you know that I was the vicar here from 1991 until 2000, about 30 years ago. I was only 12, but quite precious. <laughs> St. Luke's was my first congregation after seminary. I was very naive, eager to change the world, and not patient about how long change was taking. I still am all of those things. <laughs> but thankful for the experiences of the years at St. Luke's in balancing my view of the world, of living in the heart of black history, and in staying patient and continuing to work for justice and for love in God's world. So thank you for all that you have taught me. Now, as far as the readings for this morning, I am not so grateful. <laughs> In the reading from 2 Samuel, we have the dysfunctional family dynamics of King David and his wife and Saul, and then followed by the Gospel of Mark, by the horrors of King Herod and the murder of John the Baptist, as the result of more family betrayals and abuse. Both of these stories are about any number of sins and broken commandments. Greed, lust, idolatry, vanity, coveting, lying. I think sloth is the only one not included, <laughs> which is one of my favorites. <laughs> Why does God keep giving us stories about such broken people? David, though amazingly faithful to God, is not so loving of his wife or of Saul. And yet God favors and stays with David. Herod was torn between his belief and caring for John the Baptist and his commitment to his daughter. He cheats on his wife. He has John murdered. So what are we to learn from these ancient leaders? Leaders who in some ways are not so different from those today. I can say that here, but not in <laughs> Where in the midst of the evil and cruelty of ancient life and modern life, can we hope for the true light and the presence of God's Holy Spirit? I believe God creates each of us with good traits and destructive traits, parts which help the world and parts which harm the world. 
William Martin, in his translation of the sages Tao Te Ching, writes, the first part of our life is spent separating things into categories, good, bad, like, dislike, me, you, us, them. Now it is time to put all the pieces back together into a seamless whole. In our search for wholeness and holiness, when we learn to see both our own loving and unloving parts, we are able to be more open and compassionate to others. As Bishop Curry says, if it's not about love, it's not about God. Several months ago, I wrote a poem. It's called Common Ground. Indoor swimming at the Y is not my favorite unless I have a lane to myself. Today, the waters were invaded. Five youngish, rowdy white guys in my space, in my face. I did not want them there. Later, the lifeguard said they were from the recovery house. Hmm, hmm, why, I'm in recovery. My whole family's in recovery. They were suddenly my brothers. Imagine, imagine. And so we come into this place, come into this place where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. We come into this place. <laughs>